Hi there, Doug Stuman with IT Creations with a brand new server from Dell, the Dell EMC PowerEdge R6525 server. I must admit, I was kind of excited to get this system because as you may have guessed from the five on the end of that name, this platform features AMD Epic processors. Not only that, but two of the new second generation AMD Epics in a 1U chassis. Let's take a look. In addition to the Epic and Ryzen line of processors, AMD is the first company to offer PCI 4.0 compatibility on an x86 platform. PCI 4.0 doubles the I.O. bandwidth compared to that supported by PCI 3.0. What does it all mean? It's faster, stronger, better than it was before. You also get 128 PCI lanes to work with, and that's using a single Epic processor or two. And you're thinking, why don't I get all 256? You know, 128 plus 128 equals 256. It does sound a little strange until you consider the general architecture of the CPUs, which is more of a microprocessor with everything integrated instead of a CPU or central processing unit that sits back and controls the chipset scattered around the motherboard like a symphony. So, in this case, 128 lanes are used for CPU to CPU communications, and the other 128 PCI lanes are for expansion cards like network controllers, HD RAID controllers, super fast storage, and GPUs. The interesting thing is, even if there was just a single processor, you still get all 128 PCI 4.0 lanes. Compare that with the 96 PCI 3.0 lanes, dual processors supported on Intel-based platforms. Maybe I should have told you all this at the end. Anyways, the bezel in the front of the system should be familiar with a honeycomb pattern and optional control panel. The control panel on the left features a status indicator with telltale lights indicating drive status, temperature, electrical, memory, and PCI indicator. You can also get the system with the optional Quick Sync 2.0 button next to the information button for at chassis management of the system using a smartphone or tablet. The right server ear has a power on button plus USB 3.0 port and a mini USB C port for direct access to the integrated iDRAC module and VGA port for at chassis management of the system. Underneath that bezel, you'll find four 3.5 inch storage bays, at least on our system. Other storage configurations include eight 2.5 inch, 10 2.5 inch drives, and even a 12 bay configuration with 10 up front and two in the back. Are you interested in the Dell EMC PowerEdge R6525 server powered by AMD's Epic processors? Because if you are, then for a limited time, you can purchase this system for $500 off the list price of a system listed on our site at $5,000 or more. Just click that link to see pricing, and when you're ready to make a purchase, just mention this video. On the back of the system, you'll see a hot swap 800 watt platinum PSU to either side of the chassis with options for either 1400 watt platinum or 1100 watt titanium PSUs. Right next to that first PSU is a dedicated slot for a special hot swap M.2 carrier for use as a dual redundant boot drive. We didn't get one of those, unfortunately. From left to right, we have two RJ45 network ports, optional OCP NIC port, system identification button, dedicated RJ45 iDRAC port, plus a USB 3.0 port on the bottom a USB 2.0 port on the top, and VGA port. These ports are all supported by small mezzanine cards that plug directly into the motherboard. On top of those are expansion card riser slots. That will vary depending on the specific riser options you install. We'll get to that in a moment. Once we remove the cover panel, you can see this is a very compact system. What makes this system unique? Dell didn't just use the motherboard they had already designed for the first generation AMD Epic processors. Oh no, that would have been too easy. In order to take full advantage of the capabilities offered by AMD Epic Gen 2 processors and the associated heat generation, plus PCI 4.0, they designed an entirely new board. This new one is T-shaped with PSUs to either side of the chassis. The new design serves to mitigate heat buildup by providing better air circulation. It's got eight high-performance fans sucking fresh air past those hard drives up front and pushing it over the memory modules and CPU heat sinks, and then out the back. The PCIe lanes have also been moved closer to the CPUs for better performance and less latency. This system came with a pair of Epic 7205 processors, which may not feature the 64 cores and 128 threads supported by, say, the Epic 7H12 or the 7742 CPUs, but it does have 32 cores and 64 threads to work with, which for my last count is still four more than the Platinum Intel Xeon Scalable 8280 CPUs at 28 cores. The R6525 will support 64 core processors in each socket, but only up to 225 watts TDP. This one supports a thermal design point TDP of 180 watts, which is just sipping power compared to the 7H12 Epic processors with a TDP of 280 watts. And that rivals the AMD Ryzen Threadripper CPU we had in our Fractal workstation from the last review, and it had a gigantic fan, which brings us to the memory. Eight channels of DDR4 memory instead of six channels. So what you get is four pairs of memory module slots to either side for a total of 32 active memory module slots. 
is capable of sporting up to four terabytes of memory using 128 gigabyte load reduced memory modules in each slot. Registered DIMMs will provide a maximum of two terabytes of memory. Data centric persistent memory modules, those DCP MMM whatevers, or otherwise known by their brand name, Intel Optane memory modules, are not supported. I mean, is this really a surprise to you? Memory does take a hit compared to the maximum levels available on the Intel Xeon platforms because no L suffix memory modules at 4.5 terabytes per CPU like on a select few of the Intel Xeon scalable processors. Instead, they all support two terabytes each, but it speeds up to 3200 megahertz. That said, the LR DIMMs only support 2666 megahertz with all slots loaded and dual processors. For maximum throughput at the full 3200 megahertz, you can only install half the memory with one module in each memory channel. The great thing about these AMD systems is that they will work seamlessly with the rest of your Intel-based hardware. This R6525 uses the integrated Dell Remote Access Controller, or iDRAC 9.0 with Lifecycle Controller, for ad chassis and remote management of the system, just like the other platforms. The cyber-resilient architecture is managed at every moment of the product lifecycle and allows for automated management with scripting using iDRAC RESTful API with Redfish compatibility. Dell EMC Open Manage provides another layer of efficiency in the data center, streamlining operations with automation, resulting in up to 72% less IT effort. On a side note, have you ever wondered how they come up with all these percentages? Anyways, there are several security features, including cryptographic isolation between the hypervisor and VMs, plus a bunch of other cool sounding features. You can install SATA, SAS, or NVMe drives up front, depending on your need for speed, capacity, or a little both. An optional boot optimized subsystem or BOSS will support two M.2 SSDs and a hardware RAID for redundancy. For hypervisor support, an optional internal dual SD card module can be installed. SATA drives are supported natively using the integrated S150 storage controller with SAS SATA backplane, like on this system. SAS at 12 gigabit per second and NVMe drives will require a PCI controller and the NVMe backplane. It looks like there are a few new perks to choose from, including a few for internal storage that have familiar sounding names, but with the number five on the end. The H345, the H745, and the HBA345. Looks like the H840 is still an option for support of external drives. These are different controllers than even those used in the fairly new R6415, which also used mini perks. Here's a link to that video. Ours is outfitted with the new H345 mini perk controller and features a very compact size with a dedicated connection port to help preserve your limited PCIe slots. A variant on the 10 bay chassis will also accept two more 2.5 inch drives in a rear drive cage, but that will take up some of your PCIe slots. There are four different riser types to choose from depending on your workload. However, only riser type one will work with the system in a single processor configuration. Along with the two integrated RJ45 ports, there's an option for more ports using an optional OCP card. It supports a number of connections, including up to 100 gigabit ethernet without using the PCIe lanes. This system will support a maximum of one full height single width GPU, like the NVIDIA T4 Tensor Core GPU, which is ideal for distributed computing environments. Or you can install up to three low profile single width cards at 75 watts apiece. There's a lot going on with this little 1U server. These systems are great for high performance computing, dense virtualization, and also for VDI deployments, demanding workloads, and applications such as data warehouses, e-commerce, and database. The Dell EMC PowerEdge R6525 has a great capacity for flexibility, and with AMD processors, you can reap the rewards of some serious core counts. If you like this video and would like to see more, then subscribe to our channel. Give it the thumbs up too while you're at it. If you have any questions on this or any other server, just post them in the comment section below. We actually do try and answer those. Once again, if you have a need for this server or something else, then click that link on the side and check out IT Creations. We have this server and many, many others that we would love to build for you. Until next time, I'm Doug Stuman with IT Creations, and thanks for watching.